Okay, I'll call the February 7th, 2019 <coughs> meeting to order for Dickinson County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for our meeting today, um, because of the weather, um, Craig has stayed at his house in Chamberlain, and but he's joined us uh, by phone, so he will be participating in the meeting. Uh, so we have all three of the commissioners um, here for our meeting. Um, the first thing I have is the approval of the agenda, and we are adding two items. It's a resolution, and this is is in regards to the stop signs and then also the uh, builders risk insurance on our building project that's coming up. I would move that we approve the agenda. I second it. We have the approval and the second for the amended agenda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The next item is the consent agenda. This includes the minutes of January 31st meeting, payroll of $294,996.51, wire payment, which is utilities of $13,929.86, wire payment of capers, $47,102.14, abatements, $2,061.08. I move to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval of the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On commission comments, um, Craig, would you have any that you'd like to give at this time? Yes, uh, probably couldn't be there, but it was my, probably my leg step. I didn't want to get out on the sidewalk and stuff and get set back in, but thanks a lot. Okay. Uh, Ron? Uh, Monday of this week here, I did attend the Tri-County uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce meeting, uh, annual banquet, and it, it turned out to be absolutely wonderful. I, it was a full house, a lot of participants, a lot of recognition for the businesses and people that are sponsoring the, the, the folks down there. And it was really a, a really good meeting to attend. Uh, last night, I did, did attend the Dickinson County Farm Bureau meeting. Uh, wonderful speakers, a wonderful opportunity to have a good meal. Uh, big turnout. I was concerned with the roads and the conditions. It wouldn't be very much of a turnout. It was pretty much a packed house. So they did a really, really good job of uh, uh, putting on a program for us. And that's what I have. Okay. Um, this past Monday, uh, the same time they had the Tri County event uh, for the Chamber. There was the annual Groundhog Pancake Waffle Feed at Lyona Methodist Church. Um, it's the 75th year that they've had that. It's a great community event. There's people that come from uh, all surrounding areas, uh, Gary County as well as Dickinson County, so lots of familiar faces. Um, they serve over 500 uh, people on that and um, it's it's just an outstanding tradition that they have there and so I was pleased to attend that and just see how vibrant that uh, community pride is in that Lyona area um, also sometimes it's kind of a homecoming because people that have moved away from the Lyona area um, you know from Manhattan or wherever um, Junction City and, and further away than that make a point to come back at that particular uh, event and uh, so anyway it was it was very well attended um, also I did attend the Farm Bureau uh, dinner that they had last night and as Ron mentioned uh, a great crowd there um, they recognized uh, what the Hettenbach family the uh, Jared Hoover family, when I mention these families, actually, I mean, they go back, these are century farms, and so they go back uh, generationally, and the Snyder family. But when you hear the stories and the comments on 
the settling of the farm and how it's been passed from generation to generation. Um, and it's a great time to recognize the impact of the farms and rural area on Dickinson County. And they also had uh, the various um, FFA groups there um, from the uh, surround Abilene as well as, as Solomon and you know through the high schools, um, Harrington and, and Chapman. Um, so they had individuals representing them to give reports and I'm always amazed to see some of these young people get up and just seem to speak with such ease and yet have, and have such a good story to tell. So um, I, I was pleased to attend that event. Earlier this morning, um, Tim Holmes stopped in and um, just kind of mentioned that he had an appreciation for some of the discussion that had taken place uh, on the purchasing of the county. And, and of course he's had opportunity and has provided many vehicles to us and um, but, but also is very interested in the process that we go through on that. And so we had a, a good discussion and um, you know certainly appreciate his community leadership and, and um, he did kind of mention um, that I, I don't think it was a misquote, but it was just misinformation on the article that he has, what, 50 some employees or 51? 55, I think. It's yeah, but, but anyway, um, and he wasn't disparaging about it. He just wanted to point out that, um, you know, that's quite an impact that they have. And um, so anyway, I appreciated him coming in. Uh, Leah Hearn came in from the treasurer's office and just kind of gave us an update on some of the things there. Um, in her office and uh, some of the procedures and uh, um, also got signatures from us because every time it's a new year a new commission and so on the banks want all these signatures and uh, she's very precise in getting everything taken care of. That's all I have. Is there anything else that anyone would want to add or anything that's been overlooked? We do not have any proclamations, but if there's any public comments on anything not on the agenda, this, they could be made at this time. Okay, otherwise we'll go to report of county officers. So Brad, we'll start with you. Okay, in your package you've got the uh, year-to-date staffing report. We'll start with from Diane, and uh, for some reason we've had a number of uh, People leave us here at the end of January. We've got five total from the appraiser and the sheriff's department and the road and bridge. So hopefully that's not a trend that will continue. We went for quite a period of time and we didn't have any. So, uh, but at any rate, that's that's the way we're starting off 2019. So, uh, and then on your the ne next item is the uh, cash balances report, budget report year to date, and of course it's very early in the year, but as I'd explained in the previous meetings, uh, the front end of the year is very front heavy when it comes to contracts and uh, expenses that uh, cover the full year's term, uh, but we've, we've got a number of, and we do have a number of, uh, of the accounts that are down very low, and that's simply because the distribution hasn't come out. Uh, we'll get more money in, tax money in, uh, in the middle of the year that'll cover that, so that's not something to be alarmed at. So. On the sales tax report, I guess that's probably the best news of everything. If you look at the, uh, the sales tax collections for the county uh, during the uh, last month of January, $118,000, that's higher than any month we had during the uh, year of 2018. So that's really well. Of course, that's going to be the sales tax going into, uh, what, November time period. People are getting ready for Christmas and stuff, so traditionally it's a little higher. But given the fact it's it's up considerably over what any month was in 18 is good. If you look at the special sales tax for road and bridge uh, purchases, that was up as well, uh, 114,678 for the month, and that also is higher than any month in 2018. So I think uh, as we talked before, the loves of 24/7 uh, things like that are, are probably what's res responsible for those increases. So. Uh, we uh, did receive the, uh, the pricing on the builder's risk insurance. I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to that topic. Uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock in the morning, we have the 
bid openings for the asphalt overlay project for the 2019 season. Uh, that will be in the basement. And we're uh, very optimistic that we'll get some good pricing in, given the fact that the price of oil has been down and, and uh, we've got some competitive bidders that will be working against each other. So uh, we'll be able to report that to you next week. And then also we have uh, received a number of phone calls over the past week or two from people about road conditions, specifically on the gravel roads. It happens every year. It's nothing new. Uh, but this time of year, when you get freezes and thaws, the roads, you tend to get potholes, you tend to get uh, muddy, sloppy roads. Uh, because the moisture comes down, it thaws. We get out and do what we can, and when I say we, I'm speaking for us and the townships. We do what we can to keep those in decent shape. As a matter of fact, last Saturday, we had one of our operators up on the 3400 Avenue working on Saturday. Although when he got up there, it was just too sloppy and he wasn't making any effect, so they pulled him off. But, uh, the bottom line is there is a certain period of time this time of year on gravel roads that it's going to be sloppy and it's going to be rough until we can get there and maintain them. So uh, people tend to forget that, I think, but uh, that is part of living in the country. I'd also note that I got an email this morning from a citizen out uh, in the middle part of the county that, and I'll just, I'd like to read just a little bit of it to you. And it says, uh, it was to Martin, copied to me. I know that it is, very, it is very often easy for people to quickly complain about services offered to us from the county. Well, that is not the case here. I would like to say that it is uh, sincerely appreciated the hard work your crew provides and the hard, uh, what they have done uh, to go above and beyond this winter trying to keep the highways crimped and cleaned uh, for all of our safety. So I won't mention who that was, but we appreciate it. That email coming in of the guys, I know they were out at 4 o'clock this morning treating the, the, our county roads and, and so I certainly noticed it on my way in at 7 o'clock this morning or 7.30 and, and uh, we're spending a substantial amount of money to keep those roads in good shape and we do what we can and, and uh, we certainly appreciate your efforts. So uh, that's all I have for the morning. Unless you had any questions on anything? Um, no, thank you. And uh, Doug? I guess you have some news because I saw there was a sale in the paper. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, uh, Tim Horan was there from the paper, did an excellent job, gave an accurate report for it, and the uh, tax sale went well. Some parcels of real estate did not sell. They will appear again next year on the uh, tax sale unless they're, of course, um, taxes are brought current. And now we'll move forward with getting information for uh, the 2019 and uh, see if we can get it to sell in yet this year. Okay, thank you. Um, Brad, you might mention, or, or Doug, however you want to handle that, now when we receive the monies for the tax sale and how is that channeled back to the county? Well, I can tell you this, that the next thing that happens is we will file a motion with the court asking for the court to confirm those sales. And so then that will trigger the money. It's uh, all, already in Leah's hands. Uh, and so that money's been uh, received and will be held pending the resolution to the court to make sure that the sales are confirmed. And then, and then the money will be already in her hands, so I'm assuming it's already in county possession. County's paid the um, cost of publication and the cost of the tax sale, and so those are already taken care of. So we're just now going to await the confirmation of the sale. Okay. Yeah, and it's always good to get those back on the tax rolls and of course we want properties being utilized and houses being lived in and, and fixed up so anyway it seemed like a very successful sale anything else uh, to add otherwise I'll go into notices and communications um, we had a uh, from K camp just notification of the uh, contribution pool, um, it's going to what amount to twenty four thousand five hundred thirty five dollars, and um, then we also have our insurance billing, and so that's itemized. Uh, and it, it had, for example, um, how the coverage is breaking down on the community corrections program uh, on this particular one. 
and Dixon County, we participate in that, but we pay actually 18% of the total cost. So it has to do with the, the number of, of people that we're utilizing it. Uh, most of the usage is Geary County, they have 71%, um, Marion 8%, and Morris County 3%. I want to hand this to Ron just a little bit. I don't know if you want to add any comment to that because you are a representative on that particular board. Yes, and, they, and they've done a wonderful job, as I indicated a few meetings ago, that they've, uh, they're have they operating in a, in a good, strong cash flow situation. Uh, the facility is obviously full. I think at the time we had one from Dickinson County participating there. But uh, it's, it's quite a program, and uh, uh, you guys did a good job of enacting that. Okay. Is this this is a community corrections bill, though, right? It's not juvenile detention. Oh, yeah. that is right. Yeah. Correct. So, Thank you. Oh, that's think, correctional. I think, yeah, I think Craig actually is the representative who sits on the um, sit or the cab, whatever that stands for, correctional advisory. Community board. advisory board. Yeah. There you uh, go. Okay. Yeah, I was I was looking at that yeah. as the. Um, yeah. So, Craig, I'm used to having you here where you can correct me right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for that clarification. Ron can kick that deal anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll go on to uh, new business, and we've added two items to the agenda. And the first one has to do with uh, it's a resolution for uh, the stop signs. Um, out there by Love Truck Stop, and Brad, would you want to add anything to that? Yeah, with the uh, with the implementation and installation of the roads uh, into the Love's Truck Stop, we immediately saw a need for stop signs because of the high traffic volume, which is good. Uh, we like to see that, uh, and so because of that, we have installed. Uh, a stop sign at both of the exits from the Lowe's facility and we need to we went ahead and installed them because it, it was a hazard and so we didn't wait for the resolution but uh, we do do a, need to do the resolution to follow up to make that legally binding so okay well and it's good to address that safety issue the resolution and I'll go ahead and make the motion that we adopt the resolution 020719 I'll second the motion as uh, 020719. Okay, and that's the stop signs of Love's Truck Stop. Yes. Any further discussion or any questions? Otherwise, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, I did have one notice on communication that I forgot to mention, so I'll go ahead and do that now before we go to our last uh, add on item on the agenda. Um, it's National Sloppy Joe Day is March 18th, but the um, the county clerk and county attorney offices there's they kind of rotate around various ones uh, have a lunch or something downstairs uh, where all the employees participate if they like, uh, but they're going to be having that on February 21st. So you you want to Craig you want to mark that on your calendar. Got it. <coughs> okay. The next item that we have uh, is the builder's risk insurance, and this is for our jail project. And uh, Brad, you might give us just a little more of a summary of what that's going to involve and um, the timing of that. Okay. Uh, with our with our jail and courthouse renovation project, uh, we needed to go out and, and get adequate insurance coverage for that and it covers uh, different things such as theft and and uh, various perils as well as uh, coverage for materials when they're in transit and being stored on, on our property for the project so uh, I contacted both uh, our insurance company which is KCAMP as well as uh, Smart Insurance locally here to get some information and pricing and uh, uh, much to my surprise nothing is apples to apples you know yeah. but uh, smart insurance did uh, respond back with a an insurance policy that uh, meets the requirements of the 15 million dollar coverage uh, and it has uh, various deductibles for perils and hail and wind 
uh, as well as up to $250,000 coverage for items in transit temporary storage. Um, when I talked to K Camp, they were attempting to get a policy of the same nature, and uh, when they talked to their uh, rewriter, I guess if you will, reinsurer, uh, they said uh, it would be easier just for them to increase our memorandum of coverage, which currently our, our MOC with uh, K Camp is 2.5 million, and they got his authorization to increase that to the 15 million dollar mark to cover our project. Uh, the differences between the two, the main difference between uh, what Smart Insurance and KCAP was willing to provide uh, by the various methods of Smarts, uh, the deductible that Doug said for the apparels uh, loss would be a $10,000 deductible, and if it involved wind or hail, the deductible would be $50,000. Uh, with KCAP, since it's a, a, an increase in the MOC uh, of our current policy, our current, our current coverage is a $1,000 deductible per incident. And so the deductible for any of the perils, wind or hail, would remain a thousand dollar deductible if we had an incident like that. So other than that, the, all the rest of the coverage is the same. So the difference uh, is the annual premium is quoted by Smarts fifteen thousand one seventy eight, and K Camp uh, their premium annual premium is nine thousand nine hundred forty one, and that is uh, that would be a prorated premium. Uh, period. So if we didn't start until April 1st of this year, they would prorate that out for the remainder of the year. And then if we only, if we had all of 2020, of course it would be the full amount. But if we got done in November of 2020 or something, then it would they would reduce the month off of whenever the project's completed. So that's where we're at. Uh, it kind of goes. It's consistent with the conversation we had with you know with Tim Holm when he came in and spoke to you this morning. Uh, the difference in this one I would just mention is K Camp is really us. We are a member and an owner of K Camp, and it's kind of a self insured deal. <coughs> so uh, it's not like we're going out and, and another company outside of Dickinson County is profiting from this. Uh, it's Although the coverage is going with someone, someone is assuming that liability, but it's more of the, the pool of other counties that we're, we're involved with. So. In which you're already a member of already. We're already a member yeah. of already and have been for a number of years. Okay. Yeah. Earlier in the work study session too, you had mentioned that um, Lloyd Construction had told us that probably 60 days after the putting out of the bids that they would actually be here and start in on things. Yes, so they felt like 60 days after the bids become public mm -hmm. uh, that they would be ready to hit the ground running with construction, which I was kind of surprised I figured it might take a little longer than that. So and then are those bids going to be in the next We're three hoping to by six the weeks? end of this the end of this month, the end of February, that they'll be ready to be put out for for bid. So, you know, and that would allow the, the month of March and April to or the month of March anyhow to be able to get the bidders the bids completed, get them back for to meet a deadline and, and make a determination and then another thirty days for whoever gets the bid to get their things together and, and mobilize and, and get here by the 1st of May to start construction. So that's in a perfect world, I guess. And so yeah. far, we haven't lived in a perfect world on this project at all. So, Craig, do you have any questions or? No, thank you, man. Okay. And of course, the payment for that would come out of the project account. That's one of the expenses of building this. So it'd be like any other expense. Ron, any questions or comments? Uh, no questions. Okay. I'll go ahead and make the motion that we um, extend our coverage through K Camp, and as Brad described, it would cover our uh, $15 million project um, and give us the coverage we need at the annual premium of $9,941. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have the motion and the second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. I'll give the second. We have the motion and the second to adjourn. Any comments? All in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.